The date is July 22, 1969, and for the last 21 hours and 36 minutes, America, and the world at large, has been glued to its television sets, watching the incredible exploits of humanity's first steps on another world, the culmination of thousands of years of mankind's dreams and fantasies to reach past the bounds of Earth and touch the heavens. The American moon landing has ushered a new age of humanity and signaled the first brave steps of our civilization into the universe. Live updates on the mission have poured over televisions and radios around the world, and from time to time glimpses of this historic mission have made their way back home to Earth. Now the world awaits the return of these bravest of men, ready to be welcomed back home not just as American heroes, but heroes for all the world. Suddenly though, television screens all over the globe cut from the non-stop news coverage of the historic moon landing to the White House, where a somber-looking President Nixon stares directly into the camera. With a faltering start, he clears his throat and begins to speak. Fate is ordained that men who went to the moon to explore in peace will stay on the moon to rest in peace. These brave men, Neil Armstrong and Edwin Aldrin, know that there is no hope for their recovery, but they also know that there is hope for mankind in their sacrifice. The president continues, finally nearing the end of his speech. In ancient days, men looked at the stars and saw their heroes in the constellations. In modern times, we do much the same, but our heroes are epic men of flesh and blood. Others will follow and surely find their way home. Man's search will not be denied, but these men were first, and they will remain the foremost in our hearts. For every human being who looks up at the moon in the nights to come will know that there is some corner of another world that is forever mankind. The screen cuts to the massive mission control room in NASA, the place where the hopes and dreams of every nation on Earth has rested for the last six days. With battery power failing on the lunar lander, communications with the men trapped on the moon are near an end. Finally, the two brave astronauts make their final goodbye to their loved ones and the world at large, imploring that the world should not mourn for them, but be inspired for their many accomplishments. The radio cuts out. The lander's gone dark. Trapped on the surface of the moon, the men will continue to have a few hours worth of oxygen, but will soon suffocate if they don't freeze to death first. On TV screens around the world, a priest appears live from inside the historic St. John's Episcopal Church in Washington, D.C. The father commends the souls of Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin to the deepest of the deep, much as if he were conducting a burial at sea for fallen sailors. Then he finishes with the Lord's Prayer. The previous scenario was a very real possibility and a carefully crafted response should the historic Apollo 11 suffer some form of catastrophic failure and be unable to return to the Earth. Given the incredible number of unknowns involved in the mission, from the suitability of the lunar surface for a heavy lander to touch down on, to an unknown environmental hazard on the moon and their effects on men and equipment, NASA and the American government had made every preparation for the first manned moon landing to end in disaster. The real Apollo 11, of course, ended in a historic victory for all of mankind and signaled America's triumph over its Soviet rivals in the space race. Yet, at many points throughout the mission, failure was only ever a heartbeat away. For example, when the lander undocked from the command module, the lander received a tiny bit of thrust from venting gases in the docking tunnel. While minor, in the weightless state of the spacecraft in orbit, this small amount of thrust actually placed the lander four nautical miles away from the point it was supposed to be when it was to begin its descent burn. In turn, this placed the planned landing site amidst a dangerous boulder field on the rim of a crater. Armstrong was famously forced to eyeball the landing and burned his fuel reserves dangerously low in doing so, but found a suitable landing spot nonetheless. What if the astronauts had died on the moon though? What if you died in space today? What would happen to your body, and how would NASA respond? If Armstrong and Aldrin had died on the moon, there were already plans in the US government to designate the site an official memorial. That meant that the site would be off limits to anybody else in the future. In essence, the astronauts' bodies would remain forever undisturbed inside their spacecraft for all eternity. Or at least until the sun swallows the Earth and moon up as it becomes a red giant one day. Even in some far off future where the US or other nations had significant lunar presence, recovery of the bodies would be off limits. How much would be left of the bodies is debatable though. If the lunar module had not suffered any penetration of its hull and the astronauts died say because of a power failure or a failure to ignite their ascent engine and return to the command module, then there would remain an atmosphere within the lunar module. This would also be true if the astronauts had simply stayed inside their spacesuits. In that case, bacteria would have begun to decompose the body much the same as they do here on Earth, using up the remaining oxygen in the atmosphere. There may not have been enough oxygen to keep humans alive, but there would have been enough for bacteria to thrive for a short while. When the oxygen ran out, however, bacterial respiration would switch to fermentation and the process of decomposing would continue much as here on Earth. 
at least for a short while. The lunar lander was equipped with multiple layers of mylar insulation to help keep the heat of the sun from cooking the astronauts to death and destroying sensitive equipment, while other parts that wanted to receive warmth from the sun were coated in darker, more heat absorbent materials. This ultimately would have seen the lunar lander very quickly go cold, and as the lander froze on the inside, so would the astronauts. How much decomposition would take place before all bacteria froze or suffocated to death is unknown, but the remains would likely remain very recognizable to future archaeologists who visited the site. What happens though if you die on a spacewalk? Let's say you're hanging out on the outside of the International Space Station and suddenly, through some error, you're blown clear of the ISS. With no hope of rescue, you suffocate within a few short hours. In this scenario, bacteria would begin to consume you much the same as on the moon scenario, as your suit will still retain an atmosphere for bacteria to thrive in. Eventually, the bacteria would die off, though you'd probably remain pretty warm for a long time as your remains would remain exposed to sunlight. While space itself is cold, objects can be pretty warm thanks to the non-stop glare of the sun, and the lack of an atmosphere means that heat cannot be easily leached away the same way it does here on Earth. On a chilly winter day, your body's heat is steadily leached away by the atmosphere it's constantly in contact with. But in a vacuum, there's no medium to wick heat away from the body. This is why heat management is vitally important for all spacecraft and satellites. Eventually though, the blast of never-ending radiation from the sun and passing cosmic rays would begin to destroy the integrity of your spacesuit. Over the course of a few months to a few years, the spacesuit will eventually suffer a structural failure, and with your suit being full of your decomposing gases, it'll promptly explode as air rapidly expands due to the leak. You'll then litter your personal orbit with chunky bits of your leftover flesh and spacesuit both, like a gross overripe meat balloon that burst open. Space is risky business and NASA has already planned on what to do about fatalities during one of its missions. During the age of the space shuttle, a crew fatality would be dealt with much in the same way that a current fatality would be handed aboard the International Space Station. The dead crew member would be very quickly placed inside a pressurized spacesuit and sealed inside, and then moved to the coldest part of the spacecraft for storage. This would be done to protect the rest of the crew and ship from contamination, and because dead bodies are, well, if you've ever been around anyone who's died, then you know it can be a messy affair, even if they die peacefully. In a zero-g environment, you really don't want to be dealing with the waste, stomach contents, and gases that would be voiding from the corpse. Aboard the space shuttle, the body would then simply be returned to Earth for a proper burial. Aboard the ISS, though, things would be a little trickier, as obviously the crew can't return whenever they feel like it. There, the body would likely be moved to an airlock so it could remain as cold as possible and preserved for a proper burial back home, and then could be placed inside one of the unmanned resupply craft that routinely visits the ISS. On a longer voyage though, say like a trip to Mars, NASA has to be prepared to handle crew fatalities as well. While astronauts are carefully selected to avoid any potential health issues that could cause a space fatality, sometimes tragedy is simply unpredictable, and there are plenty of hazards out there in space waiting to claim lives. An extremely long long-duration mission such as a trip to Mars is rife with possibilities for disaster, and fatalities must be planned for. In this situation, how to deal with a fatality would likely fall on the mission commander. Much like in the ISS, a fatality could simply be stored in a suit and then kept in an airlock, but mission constraints may not make that a feasible option. With such a long duration mission, there's simply no way the crew could keep the body around indefinitely both for practical reasons such as possible contamination from a suit failure, but also for morale reasons. In this event, simply jettisoning the body into space may be necessary. The spacecraft itself would likely be in an orbit which would have it enter partially into the Martian atmosphere in order to help it slow down enough to get caught by Mars's gravity, instead of simply being slingshotted into orbit around the Sun again. This means that the body would likely burn up in the Martian atmosphere, being much lighter and smaller than the spacecraft itself, so if the astronauts wanted the body to have any chance of recovery by future space travelers, then it would have to be ejected with enough force to alter its trajectory and avoid burning up in Mars's atmosphere. As long as the spacecraft was far enough away from Mars, this could very easily be accomplished and require minimal thrust. The body would remain in orbit around the Sun, and in a century or two could be recoverable by future space archaeologists wishing to give it a proper burial. If you were to die on the surface of another planet though, then much 
Much like dying en route there, what happens to you would likely end up being the choice of the mission commander. If feasible, you may be stuffed into a suit and returned with the rest of the astronauts for burial at home. But likely, whatever foreign body you happen to be on at the time would end up being your permanent resting place. In order to avoid contaminating another planet with Earth life though, your body would need to be thoroughly cremated, something which may prove difficult to do on an early mission to Mars or another planet, but which would be critical. Someone, someday, is bound to die during a space mission, and what to do with their remains when they do is of vital importance, not just for the safety and comfort of the crew, but for the bereaved family members back home, and the world whose hopes and dreams rested in them. Hopefully we don't have to find out what NASA actually does with a dead crew member in space for a long time, but it's good to know that they are at least prepared to handle this eventuality. What do you think should be done with the bodies in space? Let us know in the comments, and then watch three men stuck in space when an oxygen tank exploded. This is how they survived. As always, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more great content.